Attorney General Merrick Garland's first trip to Capitol Hill this year, and it wasn't easy. Four, four hours of relentless questioning by Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee. I'm Harris Faulkner. You are in the Faulkner Focus. Those Republicans directly accused Merrick Garland of politicizing the Justice Department. Investigations into former President Donald Trump and President Biden both happening right now, and lawmakers are questioning if the same standards are being applied to each man. Some especially hot topics, the targeting pro-life activists while letting pro-abortion vandals go off the hook, and verbal attacks on federal judges. It was not a tame affair during that hearing. You come across as being very political in the decisions that you make. We greatly respect the uh, oversight responsibilities. And at the same time, we have to protect our ongoing investigations. We've had protesters who have been showing up the homes of Supreme Court justices, uh, carrying signs, uh, picketing, shouting. It's very clear that they're trying to influence in one way or another. As soon as the Dobbs draft leaked, I ordered the uh, marshals to do something that the United States marshals had never in history done before. Historically, uh, federal judges have had a hard time defending themselves. It's not just limited to, um, to the uh, outside partisan uh, rabble rousers. This is a speech by a United States senator trying to discredit a judge, calling him a life long right-wing activist, a partisan ideologue, an anti-abortion zealot. And I wonder if you will join me in condemning that sort of attack. I am against divisive rhetoric of all kinds, but I do not have authority in this matter. Republican Senator John Cornyn of Texas in focus now, rounding out that montage, obviously a member of the Judiciary Committee. Also, you sit on the Finance and Intelligence Committees as well. Um, first of all, what was the highlight of, of that hearing yesterday with the Attorney General, would you say? Well, Harris, I think more in terms of lowlights uh, rather mm. than highlights. But, uh, you know, I was disappointed. Um, Merrick Garland served for many years as a federal judge and by all accounts was a, was a fair judge. But he knows that these attacks against uh, the judiciary, whether it's the Supreme Court or other judges, um, is unfair and it's dangerous. Uh, we know that uh, people, um, perhaps unstable people, can be incited to commit acts of violence. And indeed, it was just last year that, that uh, Justice Kavanaugh was being threatened with assassination. And uh, I would hope that Merrick Garland, as the chief law enforcement officer of the United States, would condemn it. And he didn't do it. He mm. wouldn't do it. Wow. Well, remember, it took the president of the United States many days to even mention that that was going on. Uh, you know, I, I had just told viewers that a lot of hot topics came up. This was one of them. A new report from The Washington Post says tempers were flaring in the days leading up to the August raid on former President Trump's mar largo property. Apparently, the Justice Department overruled FBI officials who were hesitant to carry out that search. Well, it looked like a raid for classified documents. Here's the attorney general on that. My question is, how often do you overrule FBI field agents for political purposes? That's not an accurate reflection of what the article says, and I'm not able to comment on the investigation. I will say as a general ma matter and a, at a high level of, uh, of, of generality that in my experience, long experience as a prosecutor, there is often a robust discussion. Robust discussion. It, it sounded like it got, well, they said tempers flaring. What's your take? Well, the attorney general, unfortunately, is, uh, is undermining trust and confidence in the Department of Justice and the FBI. And when people see the uh, disparate treatment, the different treatment uh, in different cases where President Biden is involved hmm. or, or uh, the Vice President Pence and then President Trump, they come to the conclusion in the absence of other information, there must be a double standard. And indeed, there does seem to be a double standard, and that's dictated by politics, which is unacceptable. I mean, all of that, it blew up. I mean, everybody knew that the raid had gone on, so on and so forth. And we sat for months without knowing that Joe Biden had classified documents in at least one location. It started at the Penn Biden Center. 
uh, named for him. He got a million dollars to, to use his name for that. It is different treatment. Why? Well, I, I think, uh, unfortunately, um, we don't have an attorney general who has the strength of character and the will to stand up to the politics that are coming, obviously, from the White House and, and directing his actions. You know, being attorney general is a tough job because you are the chief law enforcement officer of the government, but you're also a, a, a cabinet member for the president of the United States. And what we need to, what the American people want and what they deserve is impartial justice administered without fear or favor, regardless of whether you're the president of the United States or um, an average working family. And they just since they just do not have that trust because of uh, disparate and differential treatment uh, like this. Look, before we move on, uh, because there were so many topics that they got to A.G. Garland on, I, since I have you, I have to ask this. You're on the Intelligence Committee. And, and the documents from that first batch, there were some top secret documents that Biden had. And they had to do with at least Iran, China, and other countries. Ukraine was one of them. Um, what can you tell us about any connection points that the Intelligence Committee would look at between some of what Biden had and the investigation that's going on with his son, Hunter Biden, who was known to make some pretty shady business dealings with at least one or two of those countries? Well, this is another area where we've been stonewalled by the Biden Justice Department. Uh, as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, I and other committee members have a constitutional responsibility to do oversight of the intelligence community to make sure they're following the rules and uh, not abusing uh, the, the power that they do have, which is significant. Hmm. And so far, we've been stonewalled by the, uh, by, by the attorney general. He says this is, uh, we, he didn't want to uh, jeopardize an investigation, but we'd like to know whether uh, President Biden's access and carelessness, frankly, with classified documents has jeopardized our national security. And we can't uh, assess that uh, without getting access to the documents. And this is, a, this is not a partisan matter. This is something that both Chairman Warner, a Democrat from Virginia, and Marco mm -hmm. Rubio, a Republican from Florida, have been very clear about. And they're supported by uh, all of the members of the uh, Intelligence Committee in seeking access to these documents, as is our right. Well, and when you say access, you're talking about those documents at Biden's home, potentially, that were parked next to the Corvette, because that's what he told us. And his son then seen driving that same Corvette at their home in Delaware. Let's move to the border. Senators also putting A.G. Garland on blast over the crisis at our southern border and the massive amounts of fentanyl pouring into America. Ranking member Lindsey Graham pointed at Mexican drug cartels as the root of the problem. Mexican drug cartels. Should they be designated foreign terrorist organizations under U.S. law? Yeah, I think it's the, the same answer I gave before. Would They're you different. oppose some of us trying to make them foreign terrorist organizations? I wouldn't oppose it. We need the assistance of Mexico in this and designating. Is Mexico helping us effectively with our fentanyl problem? They are helping us, but they could do much more. Well, if this is helping, I would hate to see what not helping looks like. Garland then insisted the ultimate decision on that falls under the State Department. Senator, you're leading a delegation to the southern border tomorrow. Tell us about that and, and also your reaction to what you heard from the AG yesterday. Well, the, uh, you know, the Attorney General says it's not his job, it's the State Department to deal with these matters. I'm forgiving the federal government every tool that's necessary in order to combat the cartels that are smuggling people and drugs into the United States, and as we've said, taking so many lives and adding to uh, crime in communities all across our, our, uh, our country. Uh, I'm taking a, a group of senators to the, to the border starting tonight um, to, so they can see what I've seen many t on many trips to the border and listen to the experts, the people who I've learned from, uh, and the community leaders who are being overwhelmed by this humanitarian yes. crisis. And I think it's, they, they're interested in getting more information, and I'm interested in getting some allies to help us in this fight against this, uh, this, this crisis, which is, uh, uh, sits at uh, President Biden's feet. It's the Biden border crisis. Uh, your presence there, when, whenever there is someone with a, a, a bully pulpit, it's so important at the border. It's, it's really too bad that the White House won't go and that they won't go more. 
and more and more until they solve it. Senator, great to have you in focus today. Thank you. Thank you, Harris. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.